Um, like all English buildings, it's all of different periods. Um, this bit looks, that's Tudor, so that's 16th, late 15th, 16th century. Um, that might be older, this part. So I should think it's probably 14, bits of it 14th, 15th century, and then some of it more recently. I mean, I may be wrong, I'd have to check it, but it, it's, so it's about 600 years, bits of it. Then considering uh, the size of the village, yes. I think uh, this church is rather uh, very, very magnificent. Well, the churches in this part of England, that is particularly Suffolk, which we'll see, Suffolk, Norfolk and Essex, are huge and some of the best churches in England in this area because although Earl's Cone was not the richest, in the richest area of East Anglia, it was quite rich. Moderate, this is a moderate, they owe a rich village, but in Suffolk and Norfolk because of the sheep industry, which was very, very um, successful in the 14th, 13th, 14th century, the English wool was going all over Western Europe. It was going down through France to Spain to Italy wool was really good and they were trading uh, with uh, France for wine and things like this and so in those areas you got extremely rich people who gave endowments, who gave money to the churches to be built. So s there are some fantastic churches, uh, we might see one or two today. This is a good church, it's a nice church and it shows the dominance and the importance of religion in England. The other wonderful thing, of course, is that England, on the whole, has not suffered any of the um, terrible tragedies which most countries have had. It hasn't had invasions. There have been no invasions of England since the Norman invasion. There wasn't much bombing around here. And as a result, um, and the climate is all right, so as a result, the buildings have remained. England has more old buildings of a middling kind, not big castles and chateaus and things, but of a middling kind, they're probably more in England than the whole of the rest of the world put together. I mean, all the middling buildings in China or Japan or France were all destroyed by wars and invasions. Here they've remained. So we can walk, when we go into Earl's Cone, we can walk into a village which, behind the front, as you go into deeper in, will take you back 600 years. Many of these buildings are old, they've got old oak timbers and walls and rooms which were there 200 years before Shakespeare. Shakes this was an old village before Shakespeare and it was wealthy and it had a market and it had many, many, and it was full of money and exchange and people were coming, going to London and coming back from London and they were London merchants were coming up here and buying houses and people from here were going to London and making fortunes, Dick Whittington kind of thing. So it was part of a bigger world. And even in terms of knowledge, when we edited Jocelyn's diary, he, he wasn't just interested in this little parish. His diary records what was happening in Russia, what was happening in Italy, all over the world he was interested in, the Western world. So it, this Earl's Cone was a part of a great the beginnings of an overseas world, an empire. And then it became central because people from here, with their interests and wide interests and good education, there was a very good Earl's Cone Grammar School in the 16th century, 17th century. Well-educated, prosperous, independent, strong-minded people reacted against the church and went from here to America. The founder of Harvard University came from Earl's Cone and so they went and built a new world on the basis of their ideals of how this world should be and so to a considerable extent our modern world one of the origins or founts of it is from these villages round in Essex and Suffolk.